morning, everyone. Uh, Minister Mag here, and um, yeah, this is literally the last Sunday of the month of August, and my theme for August was awareness, and uh, the title of the ministration this morning is so self-convicting, and I think that um, it's going to convict um, other people too. Um, and um, sometimes you don't just want to reveal yourself so much when you want to talk about things which convict you yourself. And we are also going to understand why I am dressed this way. Uh, you know, it's a keeping it real ministry. And uh, I also use my my dressing. I use all kinds of tools that the Spirit puts in me to pass across the message to minister. And so um, without... Um, Taking more time, let's get into a word of prayer, right? Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to thank you so much for this morning. I want to um, invite you, Holy Spirit, to come and take total control of this ministration this morning. I want to pray that as much as it is self-convicting and it will probably convict many other people, we are able to find a way out of it. We are able to make better commitments and... Um, we are able to resolve, you know, to do better now that we know better. Father God, give me that grace. I teach what I need to learn. I learn what I need to teach. It is all by your grace. And I just want to pray that whoever listens to this on any of my platforms shall not hurt as much as they need to heal. Bless my children. Bless Esther. Bless Jason. Bless my bishop. Bless my king, bless my mother, bless my father, bless my friend. Bless everybody, Father God, especially those who look, look up to you. And even those who are still so lost and who ignore you and, and who go about, you know, just living in deceit and, and pretending to be who they are not and doing what they're not supposed to be doing or not doing what they're supposed to be doing. All of that, Father God, just continue to have mercy on us all and continue to love us in a way only you can love us. I ask you all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. Okay, having prayed, um, I mean, you can see me put on shades and you think one or two things. Either uh, my eyes are paining or I'm just aloof, I'm haughty, right? I don't care, you know, because it's still early in the morning where I am. It's not even 6 a.m., so why should I be putting on shades in the house and there's no sun and all of those things? Well, because sometimes people put them on because they don't want people to see their real face. And, you know, sometimes you look at people's eyes and you can tell what's going on in their lives. And so people are so sensitive to that and sometimes I can look into somebody's eyes and tell them something about something. So sometimes you don't want people to see your eyes, you know. And I've worked with people who sometimes also take those to perfumes and one thing they do is they, they, they wear shades to cover their eyes so you don't see how red the eyes are or you know all of those kind of things and also people who have kind of lost it a little bit up there they cover their eyes because they feel like the the, the energy they receive from the world is coming to steal something from them and they need to be very careful about who they are around and all of those things and sometimes it's just for fashion. Uh, you want to give some impression that you are um, high, how they call it, hokutsu or high level person and stuff like that. So no, you don't, they don't need to see your eyes, you know. They need to see the, the brand of the glasses you are wearing and all of those kind of things. So there are several reasons why people wear shades and um, why people dress the way they do, I think. Why people do what they do. Why people say what they say. This leads me to the team for this um, morning. Who are you deceiving? Who are you deceiving? Uh, it was put on my heart um, shortly before I left Cameroon. And um, the passage I'm going to use, just one, Acts um, chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. And it's this story of Ananias and Sapphira. And, um, yeah, who are you deceiving? And I think that, let me just be honest, I've deceived people a lot, and uh, I've deceived my own self. I have even played with the Holy Spirit as the worst one. 
And I think that that is why it cost them their lives because it was not just deceiving the community and all of that, but it is stated there clearly they wanted to deceive the Holy Spirit. They wanted to lie to the Holy Spirit. How can you? How can you? So um, permit me to... Well, well, you, don't, you don't have a choice anyway. So I'm going to minister with these glasses on because I really want the message to pass like... I, I, I want to deceive you people, right? No, I don't want to deceive you people. It's just a message I'm passing. Let's see if I can read with the glasses on. If I can't, I'm going to take them off. But I can. Okay, fine. So Acts chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. Wow. This is my last ministration in this sanctuary. And I really wanted to come and do it here. And um, I, I am still not going to stand the way she stands when she does her things because I'm not there yet. And no, nope, I cannot disrespect to that extent. I, I don't want to fool myself. So let me just be grateful that I can even stand in this place and turn around and all of those kind of things. I'm just so honored. Okay, so Acts chapter 5. But a man named Ana Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property and with his wife's knowledge, he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan, Satan filled your heart to lie? Peter wasn't there when they sold it, right? The apostle wasn't there. So you see, sometimes you think you are deceiving people. You are deceiving yourself because they know. They see it, right? The spirit speaks. <laughs> okay. Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? Because you are not really lying to, them, to, to men. Because they don't know. They, they are not supposed to know. But the Holy Spirit knows. And the Holy Spirit revealed that to the Apostle Peter. To Peter and he said it to them. Because that is actually when they say, yeah, we'll say this and then we are going to keep some for ourselves. Whereas, nobody forced them to sell it in the first place. Did anybody force you to commit? To say you will show up and then you don't show up or you show up later and then you are just... I don't care. You people should be grateful. I've even shown up to do God's work. After all, how much are they paying me? What am I getting out of this? All of those kind of things. Okay. Um, and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land. While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? It was his own. And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? He had all the money. Did he have to bring any? He could as well decide not to bring any. And come up with, and say, well, yeah, I wanted to offer this, but I can't anymore because well, my child is sick or something like that. But to do it half-half, whereas you had committed to. It's like you would say, for example, um, I would sell my land and give all the money for the harvest thanksgiving if you're in the church where they do that. Or something like that. Or I would give everything to... Um, to that ministry, I would, you know, somebody would say, I pledge to give one million, but in the end, they're not going to give that one million, whereas they have all of that one billion. Who forced you? What is that show up for? Why? Why? Who are you deceiving? Who? Who? Not another human being. If you tell somebody I'm coming and you don't come, uh -uh. okay, fine. You think that person's life is going to stop because you did not come? You are the one convincing yourself. You are the one showing how unreliable you are. You are the one showing how unserious you are. You are the one. No. And at some point, it's going to nerve you. It can even be fatal, the consequences. And at that time, you will not have anybody to be by your side to help you because, well, you've already shown them how. Nope. Nobody wants to deal with you anymore. So, Peter said, while it remained so unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? And yesterday my bishop was talking about guarding our hearts. And I had one minister about it. Guard your heart. Because that was a thought that was planted. Just like when the devil said to Eve, did the Lord God say that? So that you already start thinking, did he really say that? And why did he say that? Should he have said that? And if I do it, and then, ah, uh, thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. Hmm. Okay. Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? 
You have not lied to man, but to God. That's what I was saying. And that is even why at some point, I, I remember when I decided to start saying it as it is and speaking the truth. I think it was in 2011 when I was leaving my marriage because I had lived such a parallel life and I could lie. And it led me to where? So I was like, no, no more lying. It hurts sometimes to say the truth. It hurts. People will chastise you. People will reject you. People will say all kinds of things about you and stuff. And sometimes you just want to say a little lie, you know, but for what now? You're not lying to man. You're lying to God. Because the person you're lying to might not even know it's a lie. I remember I lived for six years. I lived a lie. And nobody knew I was living a lie. And each time there was a little... Uh, um, indication like that I would just say a big lie or some lie and then nobody would even know it was a lie I myself took a pen and wrote an eight page letter and detailed everything and all the lies I said and I wrote like that to three people what was the point to get to that extent and have to do that God thank you for saving me when Ananias heard these words he fell down and breathed his last oh my goodness and great fear came upon all who heard of it. The young men rose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. What are you going to say? What are you going to say when the apostle has just spoken to you and you have just seen the wrath of the Holy Spirit? What are you going to say again? The wrath of God. What are you going to say? You learn that lesson. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in. No knowing what had happened. Oh, so she wasn't even there, madam. She was probably going, she went to save that money or to go and do something with it or to cook the food that they're going to eat that evening and celebrate their uh, whims, right? How cunning they have been and all of those kind of things. And yet, you know, if they had succeeded, people in church would still be honoring them. Elder, elder this, elder that. Oh, la, la, they've done this, you've sown this and that. But what was that lie in the beginning? Was it necessary who was after you? And if you spoke the truth, what will happen? The truth sets free. Okay. And Peter said to her, that's verse 8, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, for so much. Oh my goodness. You come and lie to... <laughs> or maybe she had not heard a lot about the apostles because frankly speaking... Oh, well, but I think today people still do that now. Uh, they'll say powerful man of God, but people still lie to them. Even they themselves, they lie. They, they, lie, to, they lie to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the way I tell my truth now, I, I'm like, I just say it as it is. What is the worst case scenario? Frankly, I wrote a book about that. What's the worst case scenario? So, yeah, well, let, let's fall out. I might say it diplomatically or bluntly, but I will say it. Let what will happen, happen. No, 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 I'm done. But even whatever little is many, Father, perch me, perch me, perch me. Can you imagine the ask her? Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. And that's how some women, they will stand behind their husbands to the grave. I, I, I mean, I'm a founder of an association, Hope for the Abuse and the Battle. I'm a psychotherapist. I work with children who have been victims of sexual abuse, rape, and everything. Some children, even by their parents or their step parents, and sometimes the, the, the mothers or the wives know, and, and, and they, they don't say nothing, and they say, No, don't talk about it. You don't, don't want to ruin the name of the family, and all of those things. What will people say if they know that such and such thing happens in our family? So they stand by their husband. Sometimes even at the price, they, they, like they even reject their own children just to keep that marriage. Okay. But Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Hmm. And at that time, and I think even now, maybe the spirit is so linear so that many more people can you know, can repent and, um, you know, make it through that narrow gate because, wow, time, time, time. You don't have forever. Oh. Okay. Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Oh, my goodness. What a verdict. Immediately. It's not even like 
you know, she even had the opportunity to say something. Hey, when you are before the throne of grace, please say your truth. Because his grace is sufficient, but you need to say your truth. You try to lie, to be dishonest. Indeed, the two last days of August when I'm doing morning glory moment is all about honesty. He just gave me that uh, yesterday or day before yesterday. So it's it's huge. People is huge. Immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. When the young men came in, they found her dead. Oh, so those men are not yet come here because they had to go and dig and, and all of that and stuff. Bury her husband and then walk and come back. Only to come and find her own, to come and find her dead. And they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Okay, you both should go and spend that that money that you hid. Go and spend it uh, wherever you are going to. Wow. And great fear came upon the whole church. That's verse 11. And upon all who heard of these things. Amen. Okay, well, I can take these things out now. This kind of fear is called reverence. And um, we need it. We need it because sometimes we take it for granted. And... Um, you know that, yeah, well, he's a God of infinite grace and uh, his grace is sufficient and he loves us unconditionally and la, 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 la. And, uh, and a lot of people would talk about prosperity. he give you, he'll give you, he'll give you, he'll give you. What are you supposed to give him in return? Why not? It's not that he wants, um, he wants you to be you cannot be Jesus now, no. But obedience is better than sacrifice. That's what the word says. I'm not the one. So if you see you are going to do something, that's why the Bible says when you put your heart on the plow, you put it there, don't look back. It can be difficult. Then go back to him and cry. I say, Papa, it is difficult though. Papa, I have only this. Papa, Papa, Papa. Ooh. Don't receive money for something and then you don't do the thing. And then you lie that you've done it. Especially God's thing. Kingdom work. Anyway, it is between everybody and their God, you know. So, I just know that I have been convicted and this is a message I had to share and me, I obey. And um, so I've done that, and uh, the few people who follow me know that I just keep it real. I just say it as it comes. And um, but I end always by saying it's all about love and healing. It's all about coming to Him. So just as you are. So if you are somebody who is so used to telling lies, especially lies to the Holy Spirit, lies in the house of God, lies in the matters of the kingdom, please, oh. Than to say that I am with you when I am not with you. I will just leave. I'm not with you. That's how I am loyal with regards to God's things. If I, I don't want, I don't want. I learn my lessons. I continue to learn. Let the world better shun me than for God to shun me. Than for the Holy Spirit to convict me. And, 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 and for God's right. No, 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 no. So come. What are you waiting for? Come. All those lies you tell, you know, you say, well, I'm a virgin, and then you are still fooling around, or you say whatever, you know, especially for men, who can know whether you're a virgin? So you can as well be saying you're a virgin over and over again. You can, oh, in short, all these things are just coming. But you know yourself, you know the situation you live in, you know the lies you tell, you know what you are doing, all of those things. It's never too late. And it doesn't matter whether you are or oh, Archbishop, Pope, whatever, anything, as long as you are living and you are breathing and you know that you are being deceitful, like Ananias and Sapphira, nobody asks them, force them to sell their land. You know, they were living in this community and they were sharing everything, but nobody was forcing you. So if you said you were going to bring something, bring it. And if you cannot bring it again, just say you cannot bring it. Don't say you sell for so-so and so, or you, you don't even tell people how much you sell for, but you know that you are dealing with people who are in the spirit. So you go and sell, they already know that you have sold, and they know, for example, you sold for one million, and you bring 800,000, and they ask you, and you say, no, I sold for 800. 
Come on. Hey, Father, help us. Okay. Father, help us. Help us, please. Help us. Help us. We have all seen and fallen short of your glory, Father. But at least there's so much assurance and reassurance in your word. And that should be so much consolation for us. And that we can come just as we are. And that you even wait for us out of the gates like the, prodig- like the, like the father of this um, prodigal son. <clears throat> it is just so wonderful. Many are so lost <clears throat> like the coin. They don't even know they are lost and they don't probably care like that sheep who has wandered off and doesn't know the way back and they are like, okay, let me just continue in this lifestyle of deceit and dishonesty and all of those things. But we learn today we do not fool man, we fool God. We lie to God and we cannot lie to God. So in the end, we lie to our own selves. And why should we intentionally lie to our own selves? Yes, convict us, convict us, Father. Sometimes we don't want to hear things that convict us. We want to hear things that encourage us and assure us of prosperity and and salvation and everything. But we forget that we have to live in righteousness. That when we put our hands on the plow, we don't have to look back. Look at what happened to Lord's wife, Papa. I cannot be the one to remind you. But people need to wake up. People need to wake up. People need to wake up. Help us. Holy Spirit, fill us up. Convict us. So that we don't even have to get to this point again of lying, lying to you, whereas we cannot. Thank you so much for everything, Jesus. Thank you for being such a model. In your mighty name, I pray this morning. Amen. Okay, have a wonderful Sunday, world. And um, yeah, MGM tomorrow, Wednesday and Friday by grace. And uh, Breakthrough Thursday. I I talk about things that uh, move me and mean a lot to me. So Breakthrough Thursday, the link is also there in the description. Um, with Bishop Burial or on Facebook Live, yeah, at um, 4 a.m. GMT. MGM is also 4 a.m. GMT on my Instagram Live, and then I upload on different platforms. Ministration is twice a week on Wednesdays and Sundays. Have a wonderful Sunday, a serene one, everyone. I'm going to work out now, and then um, after that, um, an exciting program I'm going to the children in the streets. These are the kind of things that I love doing. And so I'm just so grateful. God bless us all.